Welcome back to the channel guys. This is Van City Audi. My name is Adam and today I'm going to be showing you guys just how easy it is to switch back to pump gas once you've been running ethanol for the entire racing season. Racing season's over here in Vancouver, Canada. It is friggin' cold. It has been about zero degrees for the past week, and I just wanted to show you guys just how easy it is to switch back. Uh, cold starts in the morning are pretty damn rough these days. It takes a couple times for it to actually start, because ethanol and cold do not mix. So, now that I don't need the absolute maximum performance all the time because it's cold, I might get some flurries, it's gonna be raining, I wanna get back on pump gas. I'm gonna get better mileage, it's a bit easier on the car, and I wanted to show you guys just how easy it is. I'm gonna be using the Uniconnect Plus cable that you actually get that you can purchase with your Unic Unitronic software. You can do this anywhere you have a strong Wi-Fi signal. I'm showing you guys just how easy it is in the comfort of my own driveway. So I'll walk you guys through the steps. Uh, a lot of people are concerned because they've been using ethanol for so long. How do I go about going to pump gas? How much fuel do I need to have in my tank? The blend I need to know. It's really, you guys are over analyzing it. It's really quite simple. I'll show you guys how to do it, what to look for, what not to be worried about, and just to show you how easy it is. Hope you guys enjoy this video. So the first thing I recommend everyone does before tuning your vehicle is get it on a battery tender or a battery charger. Always better to be safe than sorry to make sure that your battery has a constant power source with the motor not on. All right guys, so the first thing you do is you plug your UniConnect cable into your car, into your OBD port. Then you plug in the USB portion of it into your laptop. First thing you gotta do, Open the program, UniConnect Plus. Obviously, as I stated previously, you need a Wi-Fi signal, so make sure you have a strong Wi-Fi connection. First thing the program has to do is connect to the servers. Make sure your car is on. Then it says, make sure your car is on, everything is connected. Hit OK. Detecting the ECU. Make sure your VIN number is correct. Don't mind my dash cam. On your smartphone, connect to a Wi-Fi network whose name starts with Thinkware. Always got to say it's peace. Now that that's done. So what I'm doing is a performance engine flash. Detecting the ECU. Trouble codes. Uh, one more thing. <laughs> Data bus error value received. This is always the same code you get regardless of what tune. You don't have anything to worry about. You hit next. Selecting the client and it then selects the tunes and the stages that are available to you, what you've paid for. So I have all the stage one files and the stage two files. Currently running the E85 file, as you can see, stage two, E60, E85, Rev 3B. That's the production file on E85. Now I need to turn to the stage two, 93 octane, requires uni injectors. So I need to flash that file because I have the upgraded injectors to run the E85. If you didn't have those upgraded injectors, there's a different file for you to flash. So make sure you're flashing the right file if you have any questions, reach out to Unitronic to make sure you're flashing the right one. In my case, it's this one. Stage two, 93, Unitronic injectors, downpipe, inlet, and intake. All installed, good to go, let's choose that file. Right now, it is selecting that file it is contacting the servers at Unitronic and it's downloading that actual file to install on your ECU. Now it gives you the warning, connecting, make sure that your power doesn't disconnect, make sure that it is nice and smooth, strong Wi-Fi, strong battery, the whole nine yards, make sure it's good to go, and then attempt. Something that's recommended by a lot of people, a lot of tuners, make sure you have a battery tender on your battery to make sure your battery doesn't die while tuning. Uh, this was a big concern of mine while I was running my racing battery because it had such a short life when it wasn't connected to power while the engine wasn't running. It was, a, I don't know, 20 minutes and the thing was dead. Now I'm back to the stock, so it doesn't matter. 
So now it's programming the ECU and all of those beeps are normal. That is your dash, lighting up, beeping away, totally normal, doesn't matter what tune you're flashing, that's what's going to happen. So that's gonna take place while this is programming. So we're now in the very, very final percentages of the ECU reprogramming. We're at 99%, now at 100%. So now it's gonna give me a sequence of things to do in order to complete this ECU reprogramming. First thing is switch the ignition off. Now click next. You're gonna hear my dash cam go on and off, so I apologize for that. Letting the ECU completely power off, then you're gonna go on, and you're gonna go off again. Then next. Now it's doing the same thing, making sure the ECU is completely powered off. And then you're gonna go on again. This time you're gonna hit next, and it's gonna to check to make sure the ECU is okay. Perfect. So sorry about the dash cam. But as I stated earlier, data bus error value, damn dash cam, <laughs> it's going to happen regardless of what tune. So that's totally okay. As long as there's no other fault codes, we're good to go. Next one is next. It's been programmed successfully. Ignition off and done. So you're done flashing your ECU. Now the next thing I need to do is fill up my car with gas. But what I wanted to show you guys first is the level of fuel that I have. Currently, I have two bars remaining, good for about 55 kilometers on ethanol. I currently sit at E75. So what I'm going to do is fill up my entire tank of gas with 94 octane with 0% ethanol and let it balance itself out and lower the ethanol content by adding all that pump gas. So as you guys can see now, I filled up the tank all the way to the top, put in about 39 liters of fuel and got it to the very top, but my ethanol gauge hasn't changed. That's simply because the fuel hasn't gone through the fuel system. So I'm gonna give the car a start now that it's programmed on pump gas even though this says E75, you're not gonna do any harm to the vehicle whatsoever by turning on the car because you're gonna have to get that fuel circulating through the fuel system. Brum, 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 starts with ease. Now I let the car idle for about 10 minutes to let the pump gas circulate through the fuel system and watch that ethanol gauge go down in content. So it's been roughly 10 to 15 minutes and voila, it is now dropped to 21% ethanol. Now, according to my numbers, I wanna say that the calculation I made is pretty damn close for once. I wanted to hit about E20 with the blend that I was putting in. Reason being is I know that ethanol adds to performance. And if you're using the appropriate octane, I'm using 94, but it doesn't have any ethanol, there's no harm in running up to 20% ethanol. Your fuel system can totally handle it and you'll only get benefits in performance. Please, please don't just free ball it and hope that you get it right. Make sure you have an ethanol content analyzer in your car make sure you're testing the ethanol before you put it in to make sure you're not running too high in ethanol content on your pump gas i prefer to run about e20 to see the gains most pump fuel in uh, the states is mandated at up to 10 percent ethanol so there might already be ethanol in it but here in bc the 94 octane fuel that we have available to us has zero ethanol so I left what I did in the tank as a blend to see if I could get to that E20 and it'll be perfectly fine with actual benefits because the octane will be slightly higher, your car, your motor will run a bit cooler because of that ethanol. Now I will 
make the suggestion to go no higher than E20. Some people play with as high as E30 blends. I personally don't like to go above E20. And look at that, holy crap. It actually did it. E20 right on the money. So now that it's idled for a bit, I'm actually gonna take it out, take it for a light drive. I'm not gonna be ripping on it. I put about, I don't know, 10, 15 kilometers of light driving, stay out of boost. Just let the ECU adapt and get used to being on this pump tune. Once it's had some time though, then feel free to romp on it and start enjoying it. Not gonna be nearly as fast as ethanol, but you're gonna get better gas mileage and you're not gonna have any more cold start issues. So now I'm gonna take it for a drive and see if that ethanol content gets even lower. Well, at the conclusion of a 10 minute drive, I spoke too soon. E17 is what it ended up being. As you can see, forgot to mention the differences. I now have a 7200 RPM red line, whereas the ethanol file has a 7500 RPM red line, but looking forward to better gas mileage and my cold starts are gonna be just fine again. It's that easy guys to switch back to pump gas from ethanol using your UniConnect Plus system with your Unitronic software. Very easy, just make sure you take it easy, make sure you know your ethanol content, make sure you don't go above E20, at least that's my personal opinion, what I play with, I don't go any higher than that. Uh, E15 to E20 is what I'm going to go through the entire winter months. As you guys already know the funnel of the channel, I'm a little nuts. I wanna make sure I'm getting the best performance I can out of my vehicle. So I am going to be running 94 ethanol free fuel and I'm gonna be mixing E85 for a blend of about 15 to 20% ethanol to get as much performance as I can, but while still using pump fuel over the winter season. So I'm done with ethanol for now. All my future comparisons over the next few months are going to be on pump gas. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me, all you do is run ethanol. Some of us don't have ethanol available to us. Well, for all of you that have been asking, I'm gonna be getting back out on the dyno. I'm gonna be doing draggy runs. I'm gonna be letting you guys know how these cars perform, how mine in particular, with a full bolt-on setup, with that brand new four inch Unitronic intake that I just put on. For those of you that missed the review, I'm gonna put it in the description below, a link to that video to show the dyno testing that I did to prove the power that it makes. So thank you everyone for watching. I really hope everyone enjoyed this video. For those that were the virgins and had only been on E85 and never switched back to pump gas, I hope this helped alleviate any of the worries that you had about switching back. So thank you everyone for watching. I appreciate your time. Please subscribe, like, and share if you haven't done so already. And I look forward to bringing you guys more content in the future. Take care guys.